Romans 5.8 says, But God demonstrated His own love to us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I hope you know this one. Let's talk about doing the right thing. What's the right thing? When do men of God know what the right thing is? In some ways, it's easy to know what the right thing is to do because God, God gave us a book that demonstrates his heart and uh, kind of what he looks for. Um, but again, it, it, in my mind, it kind of goes back to, to relationship. Where is our relationship with God? Um, I, I believe a lot different about a lot of things that I that I did in, in my past, as I've probably noted for you, um, because I I knew who God was. I knew He was completely explainable. I knew uh, I, I knew that I could figure Him out, and, and then in some ways, then I could always walk my life out knowing that I knew everything there was to know about God. I knew what His heart response would be, and and all of these things. Then I then I read the Bible. And, and, and my vision changed a little bit. <laughs> Jesus didn't actually act the way I was acting sometimes because I, I knew who was right and I knew who was wrong and I, I knew what was black and I knew what was white. And, and all of a sudden I'm like, wow, Jesus kind of walks in the gray areas that, that it was true that a woman caught in adultery should be stoned. And all of a sudden, he steps up and says, okay, you without sin, throw the first stone. And he, and he changed forever how we go from God's laws to God's heart. And yes, God's laws are true and right, and you follow them and you will be blessed. But if you follow his heart, you will carry out what he does. I think we need to be men of integrity. I think that's what is lacking today is integrity. People that say one thing and, and do another. Even when I've been in mistakes and I haven't lived up to the code, I've still got integrity because really it's, my integrity is not about me being perfect. My integrity is by living by the book. That when I do sin, I know I have an advocate with the Father and He is faithful and just to forgive me. And so I think that's why I speak of integrity. We think, we think of integrity of always being right. We're not going to be. Now, again, it's not, not a license for, for sin. But what it does, it gives us the opportunity that in our inadequacies to show his adequacies. And so I think that, that's living right. Because I, well, I just can't live right. Because I hear that people, I, you know, I'm not going to become a Christian because I just can't live that. And I go, <laughs> me either. That's why we have Christ that lives within us. The, the thing that we, we constantly encourage each other with is, is that person is not your enemy. The enemy is the enemy. The person on the other side of the table is not your enemy. And there are people, groups that my wife has to work with that say incredibly horrible things about her. Very untrue things quite often. The stories we hear come back to us from some of the people she has to work with are, are really horrific. But if you just decide because of who I am in Christ, even if that person says, stick it in your ear, I can say, all right, well, I'm not going to stick it in my ear, but I love you anyway, because God loves you, and I'm going to choose to not have you as my enemy. Uh, then we don't, the, the thing that it allows us to do is not have to carry enmity around for people. We can disagree, and at some point even say, maybe they have a point. Maybe, maybe because we're not enemies, I can listen to what you have to say and you may have something legitimate and interesting to say at some point. So uh, we just try to, to assume that the person that we're in the disagreement with is not our enemy. They just have a disagreement and that's okay. You uh, said, Pastor, you talk about politics. Well, I talk about biblical truth and that. I never tell anybody how to vote. That's their decision. Uh, uh, I am very vocal on some things that I believe in and that I agree with and that I disagree with. Can I do that in the right spirit? I think as a Christian, I have to. If we'll stand upon truth, then we can disagree with people. And we have this opportunity now. We do not need to be demonizing people. The president is not a bad man. Romney is not a bad man. These are men that are trying to fulfill something that they feel very passionate about that they want to do. Do not decide issues based upon your emotional attachment to an individual. When you get to that high of office, 
we are looking at policies and decisions. Do they have all the answers? No. Will whoever gets in office make a bunch of mistakes? Yes, every president has that we've ever had. None of them have been perfect. And so I think we have an opportunity, especially as, as Christians, that we cannot demonize this election. We've got to be very careful how we do that. Deal with the issues, yes. Speak to them passionately, yes. As both sides will, that's the political system. But if we cannot get up and talk about our politics, and here's how you can tell if you've got a good spirit. If you can't sit here and, and uh, discuss, argue, debate about what you believe, what they believe in that, and then at the end of that debate, walk away as friends, your Christianity isn't being lived out. We've got to be able to do that.